All right, so in, in today's video, I do want to do a quick analysis of the team time trial that occurred today in the Tour of Britain. Now, there was a lot of talk before the team time trial about will Ribble Pro Cycling win it and all the rest of it, and also who will do well. It was relatively well, um, there was a lot of good names here, pretty high competition. And also, I guess there is the team time trial coming up in the Worlds. Obviously, it's mixed and it's, te and it's teams, uh, international teams. However, still interesting to see. And also, the other thing to remember is there haven't been many team time trials this year. I mean, obviously, setting money, com co setting money, copy internationale, Bartoli is one of them, but there haven't really been too many. So anyway, I thought we'd go through, you know, obviously the results first. So Ineos won, um, and you know, pretty strong ride from them. Twenty seconds ahead of Jumbo Visma, seventeen had a quick step. Jumbo Visma, Pascal Inkhorn had a puncture towards the end of the ride, uh, and so I'm going to go through that and see how much time they lost. And then we'll go through like what where Ribble finished, um, especially when you, if you look at the um, intermediate splits, they actually did really well. Um, so yeah, we'll first go just to the stage itself. So you can see very flat, and then one fat climb. Uh, it's about three. Well, they did it in about three and a half minutes, four minutes. Uh, I think it's a kilometer and a bit at um, like two three percent. So you know, in all in all, not crazy hard. Uh, right, so there's a lot of people who've uploaded with no power data, so you will have to bear with me a little bit. Uh, however, I think we can we, we can have a good, you know, illustration of what what's required. So obviously, average speed, first of all, 54 kilometers an hour, very quick. Uh, was R Richie Port did he won it? Uh, and then if we look at sort of like uh, Wout van Aert's ride, for instance, who finished in third place, 53.3, and then we can also see as well. Um, Mikael Honore's ride as well, 53.2. So first of all, I think we should talk about Ribble because I think I thought they were going to do quite well. Uh, but I think what we can basically show from Ribble, so overall they averaged 51 kilometers an hour, that minute back on Ineos, which is, you know, all in all, a very respectable ride for a continental team. They were saying they really wanted to, you know, do really, really well on it, uh, like maybe podium. But they did say beforehand that this climb was an issue. And I think it's important to look at this climb. So Dan Bigham, uh, did 5.2 watts per kilo for four minutes on this climb. They averaged 29, 30 kilometers an hour. Now that's not very fast. When we compare it to like Jimmy Janssen's, who was riding for Alpes and Fenix, who did beat them by a fair amount. Like, um, so if we look at Alpes and Fenix, uh, they actually did what, um, 57 seconds. So they were like uh, a fair minute quicker. However, if you look, we're going to have a look here um, at the intermediate splits because I think this is this is actually where it's quite interesting. So. Uh, if we actually look at time one, they were well up, uh, we were well tight. Now, obviously, that was 10 minutes in. So if we go into um, Dan Biggin's file here, we can see 10 minutes in is going to be um, where it's basically pan flat. Um, they had a really good ride from the off, 56 kilometers an hour, 360 watts. Um, and it suits them quite well because they're very aerodynamic and that's what they focused on. However, on the climb, as I said before, Four minutes for them, Yimmy Janssen's three minutes 30. So they lost 30 seconds just on the climb alone. If we look at the watts per kilo, okay, Jimmy Janssen's maybe on the front, which is why he's doing more watts, but it's 6.4. So assuming, you know, it doesn't really matter. They went 34 kilometers an hour. Dan Bigham's Ribble went 29 or 30 kilometers an hour. And that is the slight issue. We look at Dan Bigham's ride. You can see he did some big turns here. Well, I assume they are because they're on the front. Last time I did a video analyzing Dan Bigham's power day, he commented saying I was all wrong. But anyway, hopefully I'm right this time. Uh, 500 watts for a minute, which is also very, very strong. Um, I'm not sure what they were really expecting today. It's really hard to beat the World Tour pros because they just have so much horsepower, even if you're like super aero and all the rest of it. Again, another 500 watts here. Um, so I think the next thing we're going to talk about is going to be Jumbo Visma. So Pascal Inkhorn, as I previously mentioned, said uh, got a puncture. And the question is, would, would did that actually derail them? Now, I think the puncture was in the downhill. So I think what I'm going to do is compare, uh, well, obviously I've already done this, um, but is compare the speeds um, of Ineos and Jumbo Visma from the, the previous part, like before the downhill. And you can see here, average speed 53.3, Jumbo Visma 52.7. So you can show, see already that they were back in terms of time it's about 12 seconds obviously i haven't highlighted it to the exact same point could be some issues when they started but you get the gist of the idea they were a little bit back then if we look at the first part of the downhill they absolutely razzed it um this part here um if we sort of well this is actually the best so this is from the climb to the finish um so we just look at this sort of high speed part here 67.5 kilometers an hour for Wout van Aert and the boys um and then if we look uh on this uh, we can see that, wait, hang on a minute. No, sorry, this is, this, um, no, sorry, 67 kilometers an hour for Ineos, 
um, and then if we sort of just do the high speed part here as well um, you can see it's uh, slightly quicker but basically there wasn't much in it they did go slightly faster I can't find the exact point but the time you can really see they had to wait was from this like say lower speed section to the finish to the last 500 meters um, for example I think is, is probably the best way to say it um, so from about here if we look at the last um, so well, 600 meters here um, we can go a little bit here like 51 kilometers an hour for Ineos 46 and that's where they lost time um, so you know they lost four seconds in that point but also if you look after the turn they waited so much they averaged 44 kilometers an hour for the last 20 seconds um, and then if we compare that to like Jimmy Janssen's for instance where he actually has power data you know he's doing 825 watts for the last 17 seconds and going 56 kilometers an hour so they obviously lost a fair amount of time there as well but the question is if, again if we look at the results was it actually time I don't think that they've, that's 20 seconds of loss it, it may have been it looked a lot longer, but the thing you have to remember is that like they're waiting up, but because it was downhill, like Pascal Inkel was still going like 56k an hour, but the, and so maybe they'd be going like 58. So it's not like it's on the flat where they'd be going 60 and they're waiting at 40. Like they were obviously waiting, but I don't know how much at time. Personally, looking from the data itself, I don't think it would have been enough. Obviously, they would have been quicker, but I don't know about 20 seconds quicker. Um, and then I want to look at just at Yimmy Janssen's power data himself. I'm not sure it's Yimmy or Jimmy. Um, if anyone knows, obviously let me know, or it's just Jim. So maybe maybe it's not, I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, what you can see here though is a very interesting power file, quite similar to my uh, a lot of training sessions I do, which are over-unders. Now that literally is obviously what team time trials are. It's quite obvious um, when you think about it, but it, I think with the heart rate, it's pretty, it's pretty nice because you can actually see that like the general trend is up, but it sort of is like oscillating upwards. Um, and you can also see the sort of efforts. It's quite clear when he's doing an effort on the front, like here, you know 560 watts for 30 seconds so quite short turns um which is generally what you see in team time trials that they do 20 second turns i don't know if yumi jansen's did the turn up here like his cadence is really smooth so maybe he did but at the same time because it's a climb you don't really know and then on the downhill again you can see here like he obviously wasn't pulling here at all because um if we look at this bar he's doing like 300 watts like obviously there's a little surges and stuff but not too crazy but yeah it's interesting to see um also super high cadence as well and you can also maybe see from this power file why it suits sprinters quite a lot as well to, um because it's sort of a hard sustained effort at like you know 560 600 watts and then recover so it's like if you've got the anaerobic capacity you can actually get around a team time trial very well um like cav did actually finish uh with the boy um with all the people so if we look at the results here um you can see so cav actually finished with everyone else um which is always interesting to see um, well, Tim de Klerk, they were saying before, he doesn't like the surges as much, which makes sense. He's more of a steady guy. But anyway, that's my analysis for the team time trial today. Pretty interesting, pretty rapid. I, I do like team time trials. I like the discipline, but I don't like the time gaps because now we've got people like Max Stedman, who's like years back, unfortunately, for the poor lad. Even James Shaw, I mean, like he had a good t um, team time trial, obviously, with Ribble, but he's still quite far back. Alex Peters as well. Like it It's the Conti boys who don't have the best team time trial squads who just um, like leak time. And I think... In a grand tour, I'm sort of like, you all have money, so like just grow up and you get a better team time trial squad. Obviously, some people have more money, but then when it's like Conti lads who like some of them aren't even full time or like, you know, don't even earn a living compared to Ineos who are probably spending like how many millions on wind tunnel testing, it's a, it, it's a, bit, of a, it's a bit of a harsh one for them. Uh, and you can see that with the speeds. Obviously, you can practice more, but you know, it, it is what it is, as they say. But anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy, and we'll see you in the next one.